All right, so in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to use the range time calculator to calculate, to estimate your current productivity. So go ahead and fire it up, open the spreadsheet if you can, so that you can walk with me as you listen and watch this video. Otherwise, you know, obviously just watch the video and it'll become clear how to use it because it is really quite a simple tool. So when you open up the spreadsheet, you're going to basically see this title screen. It has a link to the article that I talked about earlier. Uh, that's the added article that's titled how to sell planning and scheduling to your CEO. And then there's two buttons. The first button says the problem and the second button says the value. Now those buttons and those steps link back to sections in the article that I just mentioned. The first step, the problem is basically going to take you to a worksheet where you can enter your data and estimate your current maintenance productivity. The second button, the value will take you to another worksheet, which you can then use to take that estimated productivity as an input and estimate the total value you can gain by improving or implementing planning and scheduling in your organization. All right, so let's have a look at that first worksheet, the problem. So when you open that up, this is basically what you see. There on the left-hand side of the screen are two tables, and then on the right, you see a chart. The first table here on the left that says shift productivity allows you to enter against a number of different activities the time you're actually not working productively, not actually doing maintenance as during the shift. All right, so let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. The first cell you need to fill in is actually here at the bottom and it says total shift time. At the moment, it says 10 hours, which means that your maintenance shift that you're assuming for the shift duration is 10 hours. And so and then what you do in the area above in this section you write down all the different types of lost time, all your non-productive time, all the things that your maintenance technicians are required to do that is not actually tool time. So what you see here is that I've assumed your technicians require 20 minutes per day to receive their instructions from their supervisor. After that, they might spend 30 minutes to isolate equipment, apply their own personal logs as part of your lockout and timeout procedure. The next is to travel to and from worksite. Now here I've allowed 90 minutes, it's quite a lot. Um, I'm assuming that you've got a large site, large complex site, like a refinery or big industrial plant. Um, and at the beginning of the day, um, technicians have to travel to their work site. Then mid morning, they have to travel back for their break. Then they go back to the work site. They do the same for lunch. They do the same for the mid afternoon break. And then they travel at the end of the day. So there's a lot of walking to and fro. Um, now 90 minutes may be way too much for your site. It could be too little if you have a very dispersed geographical um, group of assets that you're... It totally depends on your organizational circumstance. The next allowance is 60 minutes to basically collect their parts, finding additional parts, all those kind of things. 30 minutes to collect their tools, maybe 30 minutes for communication delays, waiting on clarifications from the supervisor. We've got 60 minutes for authorized breaks. So that's 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon, and maybe 20 minutes for lunch. That might be too little. doesn't matter. You just need to put in what is specific for your organization. There's a little bit in here for idle time that happens at the job site. I mean, when the guys are working and getting ready, there's always a bit of time where they need to set up and they might have a five-minute chat. You can include that. You can not include it. Um, I've included idle time. You could also call it a bit of setup time. And that's the other thing here is what you see here is all these cells that are gray with blue text those are cells you can change. So you can change these descriptions. So what's in here is an example, is not something you have to stick to. You can adjust it to what suits you. Now, the next row I've put in here are some late starts and early quits because, you know, that happened, right? We're all human, meaning people finish their job a little bit early. And so five, 10 minutes before their shift finishes, they can't really start a new job. So they will wrap up and finish. It could be 10 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, you may have a very disciplined workforce, in which case it may be just zero. The next line item I've put in here is cleanup. You know, every site needs to be cleaned up at the end of the day, so you've got to allow some time for that. Same with paperwork, closing out your work orders, closing out your permits, etc. Um, there is a line item for excessive personal time, so that maybe people are taking some time to check a phone or send a personal email, etc. Now, you may be inclined not to include all those things, but you really want to try and be as complete and as accurate and as reflective of reality as possible. So put all those different non-productive categories in there, um, add up the duration, and then you see what the remaining productive time 
is left. In this case, that's 180 minutes. And that's what you see here in the section below that automatically summarizes it in hours. So non-productive, seven hours, total shift time, 10 hours. Productive time, actually doing maintenance hands-on tool is three hours, which gives you a range time of 30%. And that's what you see reflected in the pie chart here on the right. Now, you may think that seems a little bit excessive, but let me tell you, honestly, that is a very, very fair representation of what an average work site looks like. Sure, the non-productive categories that are shown here might be quite different from site to site. You may call it different things, but that 30% is really very, very typical of an average industrial site and that productivity. All right, so that fills in that first table here on the left, shift productivity. The second table that's to the right next to it is the productivity of a typical job. And that's just to allow you to essentially do the same analysis, but not at the shift level, but as a job level for a single job. So instead of doing it for a whole day, you just say, okay, I'm just gonna pick one job and I'm gonna basically analyze what my delays are. And I'm going to use that to give me an estimate of our range time. And it's up to which one you wanna use, which method you wanna use. It doesn't really matter. Both will give you an approximation of your range time. So the way this one works is a little bit different, but the principle is the same. You enter your non-productive categories and their durations. Now, again, this is in minutes. And then at the bottom here, instead of an automatic sum, what you do here is you don't put in your shift time, but you actually enter the time to do the job, the actual tool time. So in this case, what you'll see is that I've entered an hour or 60 minutes to do the actual job. And above here are all the delays associated with doing that one job that takes one hour. So in this case, the non-productive time is two hours. It's one hour to do the job, which is what it enters here, and it shows back up down here. Um, the total time is three hours, and that gives us a range time of 33%. Now, if you click on the button below, you'll actually show the chart that's associated with analyzing your productivity of that one single job. And so what you need to do with this step is basically analyze your productivity either using the shift view, a more generalized overall view of your whole group of technicians, or analyzing a typical job. Or maybe do both, it depends. Often you find that some people like the approach of looking at just a typical job because that means more to them, it's easier to visualize for them. At the same time, people will then very often say, oh yeah, but that's just one job. And which is why it can be handy to have the overview of shift productivity too. Or, which is maybe the best solution, is actually do both and see how that pans out. But the most important thing here is to be really, really honest and to be really, really clear on where your delays are. And make sure that once you're, what you enter is, is fact-based and aligns with what you and your team observe out there in the plant in real life. So one good thing that would be really good to do is to go out on site and have a look at some jobs and see where the delays are and, and maybe record that or um, analyze three or four different jobs during a day or a period of time and just come up with some typical values for the different delay categories to give you an approximate range time. Now, remember, at this point, really what you want to do is just an estimate, high-level estimate of your range. We're talking 25%, 35%, 45%. You don't want to get down to very accurate percentages. That level of detail is not required at this point. Now, let's quickly summarize what we've talked about. In this step, what we're doing is we're estimating our current maintenance productivity. And the goal is to determine the problem your organization is facing and the size of that problem. You know, the problem is your poor rent time and what you're trying to do is assess how poor that is or how good that is. Now, there are only two steps to this really. You start by entering your total shift time at the bottom of the sheet, and then you identify and record all the lost time and non-productive categories during the shift. That includes the task your maintenance techniques are required to do, but are not really related to the actual tool time. And as we talked about, you can use either the shift view or the job view or both to assess this. And remember, the gray cells with blue text are editable, so you can add or remove descriptions based on the non-productive work you observe in your organization. Now, remember, it's crucial that you're honest with yourself and you're very clear about the delays that you provide into the tool. Ensure the information you enter is factual and based on observations. Once you've recorded the lost time, the tool will automatically calculate your remaining productive time, the wrench time, and that will be updated 
in the pie chart. And keep in mind, keep in mind, I've said it many times, but it's really important that the average range time for an average industrial site is typically around 